this is a platform where we talk about everything that concerns us women. But before we get into today's conversations, let me do a quick introduction. On my right is my girl Charlotte, and on my left is my girl Lomili. So back to today's discussions. Ladies, we are talking about women and image. Now, you know, when I talk about image, we're referring to, you know, just appearances and beauty, you know, those things, things like that. Yeah. Um, it's no secret that SA hosts, hosts some of the world's finest beauties um, that the world has seen. Um, and talking about just beautiful women, um, I came across a survey recently okay. uh, conducted by the Youth Village, and um, it's just a portal for young people where they get to express themselves. And they were talking about some of the uh, South Africa's top beautiful women. And, oh. you know, typical names came up, you know, the likes like Juicy, like, oh, oh, Boiti, oh, Bonan, okay. you know, women like that. Those women are beautiful, no yeah. doubt. But I do have a I must be honest and my concern is that seemingly the media is um this is my personal opinion okay is pushing beautiful 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 women mm -hmm. in front of the camera so I guess my question is um, is talent alone enough or do you have to come with the whole package at what point do we start presenting really really just ordinary looking girls who are really great at what they do I think if you even look at things like X Factor and Idols etc yes. um, it's very hard for your adult types to become number one maybe top three because of voice and talent yes. but in terms of the packaging you, it's, it's more than just a talent you need to have the body you need to have the image you need to maybe even have the right family background to a certain degree yes. you know what I mean unless you've got a compelling rags to riches story but most of the time you can't just be and Adele, if you think of how she struggled to become where she is today, mm -hmm. um, they wanted her to slim down before they started selling her records mm -hmm. and she refused. So you really need a strong personality to face the media and oppose it and then continue being who you are, so to speak. You know? It's very, very interesting. Unfortunately, I think we still suffer from, you know, the culture of, 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 of having, of looking at the fuller figured girls a little bit more inferior. Okay. The darker skinned girl mm -hmm. is a bit mm -hmm. more fair. Mm -hmm. So generally they always say that the camera has to love you. Yes. So basically yes. you have to be a certain size. And apparently yes. um, our generation they actually get more we actually get more get more attracted to someone who who seemingly looks good, you know, fits the definition yes. of beautiful. Yes. So if yes. a girl who doesn't fit the definition of beautiful mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. along, mm -hmm. they don't really want to put her in front of the camera. You know what yeah. I mean? Yes. Because yes. they She's good for radio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Indoctrinated, you know what I mean? But I mean, if you watch shows like Mubango, um, is by uh, there's some beautiful girls there, um, yeah. I and mean, Jessica and Cozy, all those yeah. girls are fine. Yeah. So the problem is that it's not, it's, it's moving away from just being a lifestyle presented to, to the acting yes. place as well. So, across yeah. category, you know, we seem to be breeding a culture of beauty yeah. and, and talent as opposed to talent and then beauty. So, so I'm, I'm not saying there's something wrong with this. I'm just trying to find out what the ideal uh, uh, personality is in terms of just being in front of the camera. I don't know if there's an ideal personality, mm -hmm. but I do know that there was a one, there was a lady on Generations, I think. Yes. There was a big story that came out because uh, a DJ on radio spoke about how ugly she is. Oh wow. I don't know if I remember her name. I, I completely forgot her name. Yes. But it, Twitter went wild, Facebook went wild, and yes. other people were backing it up and saying, she was oh, so, she's she so ugly. Oh, she wow. even sued the, 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 the DJ. DJ, yes. Oh, good for oh, her. Oh, I wish I could remember her name. She was oh, on wow. Generations. And wow. she, 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 she but you know, I, I, I want to blame the mm. media. Mm. And, and I'll take responsibility just now, but let's okay. start with the media. Okay. Because if you think of, um, uh, what's this lady's name who just won Miss South Africa? Lisa Laurie. Lisa Lisa Laurie, etc. Yes. Uh, I was I only watched the end of the pageant, but yes. to this day, and I'm sure even in the 1960s, they still have the swimsuit category, which yes. really bothers me. <laughs> I'm like, I love, still there? I love, it's it's still, there. still there. I mean, it's I love the there. fact that they've got um, uh, the, the questions at the end, yes. you know, which yeah. is always about Nelson Mandela and world peace, yes. you know, but, but, but I'm grateful that it's there, you know, yeah. just to test some level of intellect, you're going to be yes. representing us across the world. Yes. But guys, the swimsuit category is still there. And I was like, sure. oh, maybe it's one of those things that I mean uh, somebody could e easily argue but it is a beauty pageant yeah. you know you, you know talking about just the, the idea of that beauty pageant yeah. um, I mean I, I was I was concerned I was 
concerned recently when I watched the pageant because um, it seems to me that there is a certain look that one needs to 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 maintain or to have. I'm not seeing any dreaded girl with braids mm. or an afro, <laughs> and yet we are in South Africa, yeah, you know. Yeah, so the yeah. African continent uh, boasts of beautiful, yeah. dark-skinned, rich women yeah. with, with with natural, Definitely. authentic hair. Imagine if we took the bootylicious girls from South Africa yes. and we made them compete on the world stage for Miss Universe. Yes. No, no, no shock. No shock. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. In fact, I didn't even touch on the weight thing. I'm talking about hair. So that's that's the biggest thing. Yeah. I mean, the girls are different uh, complexions. You get yes. eyes, you get yellow bones. Yes. Yes. You know, you get darker darker girls. Yes. Um, um, like your Alec Wig. Yes. But I'm 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 talking about the hair aspect. If you look at all those girls, they all have the same kind of length in terms of weave. Yeah. You know, the, the same kind of Brazilian. Path, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, they're all we doubt. So my, my my question is, can we could, could we make, could we ever look at a point where a girl would take a girl who's smart, who's beautiful, um, and has a beautiful natural afro, and put her at uh, uh, literally um, at the pageant of Miss Universe? Is there something wrong with that look? Would she not stand a chance? What is the problem? I would have to ask Donald Trump for that one. Isn't he the one who's sponsoring it? <laughs> <laughs> If we put somebody there, we'll be making a statement, but I don't think we would win. Exactly. Because uh, with Donald and everyone else there, I mean, there is a certain standard, level, or definition of yes, beauty yes. that's preceded us for decades and decades. Yes. And that's, so I think if we, if we did it, it would be the first, probably even African country, maybe, to yes, try. Yes, yes, So, yes. I mean, shout out to any Nigerians, Kenyans, <laughs> yes. Yes. that are watching. <laughs> We're going to stick together. And yes. Yes. Nonetheless, I mean, if Africa, um, imp- I shouldn't use the word imposed, but yes. if every African country started... Uh, representing at Miss Universe or yes, some form yes, or another, yes. they would start, they would have to consider. Yeah, but I suppose, think about this, I think there's supposed to be some sort of barometer to measure Miss World, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. And I think the barometer is straight hair, of yes. a certain length. Yes. You guys don't stand a chance. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> we really need to stand a chance. <laughs> Maybe me. We really need to stand a chance. No, no, we honestly, we don't stand a chance. And, you know, ladies, just talking about beautiful women, um, recently we all um, heard of the untimely death of Flava, who obviously yes. was part of Squatter Camp. Yes. But what was interesting were, were the conversations that people were having on Twitter. What were they saying? Okay. They, were, they were shocked at, at the fact that a beautiful girl killed someone. It really was about this beautiful girl. How can a beautiful girl kill that man? You know? <laughs> you know? I, I, actually, in fact, I would like to, I'd like the producers just give me a moment because my notebook over there, I've actually quoted, quote unquote, you know, I spotted some of the comments that the guys made on social media. On social media and it wow. became God a topic and a hop. Thank you. Thank you very much. It became a topic and a hop. I just want to read out some of these tweets. This one guy says, you know, she can take my life any day. <laughs> No way! That's ridiculous. And then, and then another girl saying, you know, you just had to take our flower from us, yeah. Ne? These beautiful chicks are dangerous. You know? And then what about third, her yeah. yes. And then you know, you know, lastly that girl is too beautiful to murder flower. Wow. Oh, honestly, but think about this. You know when you go to a township? Yes. yes. How do they treat the dark skin yes. and pretty girl? Yes. Versus the beautiful yellow bone girl. Haven't you seen that there's a difference in the way they treat those two girls? They almost mm. respect the girl that they deem to be beautiful. beautiful. Yes, mm. you know, I think... You, you, mean, you mean the guys, the men, or no, just, just gen- 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 society, society? Society. Yeah. I've got yeah. an Indian friend who recently got married and she's dark-skinned and her yes. mom is light-skinned. Yes. So um, the mom, when she was growing up, she used to say, why can't you be like your cousin, you know, in terms of being light-skinned? So even within the Indian community, they class according yes. to... Think of those Bollywood, yes. you know, where they yes. dance those yes. movies. Yes. It's always very... Um, Asian, um, mm. moving more to the lighter, fairer oh, skin. Definitely. I've never seen a dark skinned Indian um, star in a Bollywood movie. Yeah, yeah, they don't. They don't. So and it's across the world. And I want her to she my. Yes, you know, she, she, she was also saying that mm. in her uh, back where she's from, I'm not sure where she's from. She's Asian. Yes. She mm. says that she's okay. deemed too dark and she's not beautiful enough in her culture. Wow. I can't believe that. Wow. I think that there's just something globally about. Uh, women who are just dark as yeah, complexion yeah, is just, yeah. you know. I think it links back you know, to history. I, I want to, I want to wrap this up. But when we come back, I'd yeah. like us to talk about just people like um, uh, Lupita Nyong'o. You know, oh, yes. I mean, yes. and her rise to fame. Oh, and yes. was her rise to fame really the talent, or was it? 
fact that she was just a beautiful girl, rich skin, really authentic from Africa. So I really want to come back to okay, that. Cool. <laughs> Welcome back to Women Unplugged. Once again, this is a platform where we discuss everything women. Now, earlier on, we were talking about women, specifically as it relates to beauty, appearances, you name it. Now, we are joined by Mbali. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Thank you. Um, Mbali, you are a model. Yes, I am. And you're also a fashion entrepreneur. Yes, that's exactly what I am. Perfect. <laughs> but, 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 but going back to the model aspect, now, I've just really noticed some very striking features about you. Yeah. No pressure. Um, <laughs> really, your freckles are amazing. Thank you. Amazing, Thank amazing. You. Thank you. How was it like growing up? Growing up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With my freckles. Yeah. Funny enough, um, at school, it was very embraced. So, you know, okay. we were one of the first generation blacks to go to so called white schools. Mm. And the teachers were really like, oh my God, say it's Brutus. It was my first day at a new school in like yeah. grade, um, grade three. My yes. teacher took me out of class and I literally went door to door to every class. To hey, oh. Gang, say it's Brutus, say it's oh Brutus. I'm just like, oh, yeah. what is this? Brutus, Brutus thing that she's on about, you yes. know? Eventually I figured, oh, it's the dots on my face. And then actually started becoming more aware of them. You oh, started becoming more aware yes. of them? Yes. How old you? I was, what, nine, ten? Because oh. it's grade three. Yeah. And um, I, beca I became more aware of them. Like, oh, there's something on my face, yes. if you know what I mean. Yes. And, then, and then I started to find out, oh, it's called Brutus and Afrikaans, <laughs> it's called yes. Freckles and, like, English. Yes. But, like, it was never really... Like given that much attention until I got to to school, oh. you know. So yeah, that's that's how wow. I feel. And <laughs> has it ever affected you negatively? For a year, oh, it's always been a positive. For a year, Tell us about that. For a year, when I was sixteen, yes, yeah. what happened? Um, I decided I don't want these freckles anymore. They're not cool, mm -hmm. and I just don't want them on my face. They make my face look dirty. Wow. So I went to, you know, it's like it's a, it's a bit of a horror story, <laughs> but I went to a pharmacy and like a pharmacy mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I got there and like, I don't like these fruits, they were, um, they're not working for me. So she gave me like a cream, yes. it looks like lemon light, it's not proper packaging, <laughs> lemon <laughs> light, it's not lemon light, it's not lemon light, but it's, it, it, it's, it's a lemony like yeah, type yeah, of product. Okay. Um, and I got home and I started using it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Did I not get a reaction? <gasps> But I was, persi I was persistent. I was yes. like, oh, I have to get rid of these things. Until it got so bad, like a week later, then I was like, you know what, Medina, I'm just, I'm going to deal with this. Yes. And after that, I started embracing them. Like, you know what, this is who I am. Yeah. God gave me these. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's, let's rock these freckles. Now, what was that um, cream supposed to do? The freckles was the supposed to, the, the cream was supposed to make them lighter. Lighter. So, um, and then hopefully yeah. over time, take them away. And I'd go to like Indian places, yes. and like different places, and be like, oh my gosh, that's stuff on your face, you need to get rid of it. Oh, um, yes. You can use this, my cousin used to have them, my so-and-so used to have them. Yes. Um, and I got to a point where I was like, no, this is, this is me. Good. You know? yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm just surprised that people, such fraudsters, <laughs> <laughs> can <laughs> exist. <laughs> Mm. Anyway, now how has this affected your modeling career? Amazingly. Amazingly. Uh, <laughs> 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 I think good and bad side here. You know, <laughs> when you get old, I'm like, yeah. oh, these freckles, now I can get paid for them. Definitely a job in here and you. Exactly. Um, the reason I get booked is because yeah. of my freckles and my hair, you know. Uh, um, underneath yes. this situation, yes. I have um, Afro hair, but yeah. it's like a coppery color. Oh. So, oh. I'm an African redhead, so to speak. So that's why that's I get both. In terms of modeling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we were talking um, in the first insert about uh, the Miss South Africa pageant. Yes. yes. And how um, mm -hmm. weaves galore, mm -hmm. you know. How is it in the modeling world? Are they a bit more open in terms of different types of hair? Or is it also similar to beauty pageants where it needs to be thin, silky, and long? It's not as stringent as in beauty pageants. Okay. And over the last 10 years, I have seen a change. I've seen, okay. you know, at first it was like you've got to have this weave. Yes. Um, and then, you know, people like Noni Gasa came through. Yes. And yes. different people with dreadlocks came through. Okay. Um, you know, 
it was at the very beginning that was happening. Mm -hmm. But over time, I see the industry embracing um, afros, uh, no hair, uh, mohawks. Uh, it's becoming, you know, more balanced. Mm -hmm. I remember, like, all mainly white girls for some odd reason, mm -hmm. but they had a lot of um, eating disorders. And I just want to find out if you guys had the same experience when you were in school, growing up generally. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, chicken wing was just my thing. <laughs> I have that <laughs> <laughs> He's not a fiance. <laughs> when I was a teenager and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be in the covers of the magazines and whatnot, I got so obsessed with becoming thin and I eventually developed bulimia. You know? But my mom didn't know about it, like forever. And uh, my cousin and I were actually in it together. We were like yes. bulimic together. Wow. It was it was Tag teaming. <laughs> Tag teaming. <laughs> we were like, hey, let's, you know. And then we would over exercise and then we'd go and purge and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What scared me is when my cousin got really sick. She got like a kidney situation and she started to blow up. Now, because she, it was this big secret yes. for my parents. Yes. yes. Um, I thought she was getting fatter and she thought she was getting fatter oh, so it was like no. how are you getting fatter we're doing all these things and it came out that actually this is what's going on and eventually her parents found out now it's still a secret in my life right so I have to overcome this thing on my own and I remember when I started eating again it was like I need to keep the food down but the food yes. is so used to coming out oh, that it, yes. it was such a battle um, and anyway long story short it does it does come up yeah. um, in the black communities and it took like a good three years for me to be properly like yes. cured and healed yeah. I think maybe yeah. you're right it is in the black community it's just not mm. as, it's not defined mm. and it's just a scary thing because I mean I'm raising a daughter and fine she's one now and for the first time I'm actually thinking about it I'm like how am I going to protect her from these things mm. and you can't protect them all the time you know told yes. you know you're there sometimes and sometimes you're not because that's just life mm -hmm. um so you know you know given the fact that you were actually bulimic how would you do it with your daughter how, how would you prevent that from happening how, how, how would you guys do that it's the idea you know, now knowing that yes, you actually did this secretly it's beauty and how it is inflicted and yeah. how society defines it on your behalf mm -hmm. before you even get to tell your child what beauty is mm. society, society has doing come, the job for you has come for before you even you has, right. society has decided right. that as a girl your image has to include twerking has to include a wee twerking <laughs> and, <laughs> no it does your image has to include that yeah. and I, I, be I, sexy I know two year olds that twerk do you understand I'm much more of a father figure or a male figure absolutely if, you, if he's reinforcing that you'll be a beautiful person I think self esteem goes a long way yeah. you know when you build when you raise your child to believe that they're beautiful mm -hmm. you know yeah. That they, they, they don't yeah. need to compete with anyone or compare themselves with anyone. Mm. I think that they, they know grow to accept themselves so mm. instead of trying to morph into someone that others will accept. You know, I, I, I actually um, met a lady recently, and she's got a her, her daughter must be about five, going on to six, and the cutest little baby, cute like pretty little thing, you know, and with big, 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 big hair. This is yeah. no mix, no, no mix. Oh nothing. wow, no yeah. mix, love, like, <laughs> no, no hair food, <laughs> no. <laughs> No Indian oil. Right? <laughs> she's got, she just has this rich, thick, beautiful hair. And every time her mom walked to the little girl in malls, shopping centers, church, people would stop and comment. Say, oh my gosh, she's the most beautiful child. Look at her big brown eye and big brown round eyes. Look at her hair. And there was once a time where a lady approached, you know, the little girl, said, wow, you're such a beautiful little thing. And mom was like, no, no, the baby was like, I know, you know. And then wow. the mom, mom went straight home and shaved off that hair. Oh. And she is like. Like I'm trying to deliver a message here. I mean, that's like, oh, a bit harsh. <laughs> that's a bit drastic. I, I, I'm missing the message. I don't know. I just. I feel like you know, no. no. That's a bit harsh. I was me, shocked. You know, I was like, it's really? true his own, but I feel like that's drastic. Mm. Like, yeah. what? Because why? her hair <laughs> is her. <laughs> Was it she my fault? She just wasn't Did, sick. Now she's gonna grow up and hate her hair. Or, yeah, yeah. And think oh. that her hair is the reason mommy doesn't approve of her. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like, and even in our trying to rectify. Mm. Um, we must be careful and sensitive. So tell me, okay, mm. let's flip the coin a little bit. Okay. If your daughters mm. were a little bit on the hefty side, okay. You know, <laughs> thank you. What do you do? Do you not put her on a diet? Do you let her know that she's not exactly the right we're side? Still, oh. We're still on camera, right? Because I mean, it's a social issue. Yeah. 
Wow, that's a tough one. I've heard of people in magazines or when I read say blaming the parents because at the end of the day, who buys the food, who sources the food, who decides what breakfast, lunch, and supper is, who packs lunch for. So, but then there's also genetics. You know, some yes, yes. I think one would need to be very sensitive when it comes to genes. So if you as a mother know that you know what my mother, so baby's grandmother has, you know, potential, then you obviously are. I think your approach needs to be quite sensitive. But if all of you are just okay and baby's just getting out of hand, I think it's just a matter of just spoiling the child, you know? Mm. Um, they can eat anything they want, they just do whatever they want. So I think that there's a way to handle it. But when it comes to genes, we do need to be quite sensitive. I agree with that. But I think it's told me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, 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 not that dress. <laughs> Yes. And you suffer from that first year spring. Yes. I was a hefty girl, you know. You saw me in first year. I was a bit of a big girl. Oh, no, I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one that says that. I know I did gain a few kilos. Yes. I mean, I wasn't myself. Yes. And my mother was very, very clear. You need to lose some weight. Mama, what she did she was you so yes. she did. But, but look at the age. Yes. Look at the age. Yes, I think it gets tricky when your child is about Six, seven, eight, and still growing. And still growing. But you know what makes it so difficult? Because it means that you as the parent also need to be happy. Absolutely. And it's so much it's easier to go to Nando's yeah. and yeah. all the combos come with yes. Coke. Yes. Uh, and, and, and I'm just saying. <laughs> you just have to. So it's not even the child. You also have to you take on that responsibility. Children will do as they see yes. before they do what they're told. Well, Mali, actually, you have a clothing line. Yes. Um, African red hair. Very new clothing line. It's four months old. Perfect. And oh, just on the question of weight, so yeah. the way that I do it yeah. is I take orders and I'll measure you and I'll come and measure your arm and you so it's specific to you so you don't have to worry about oh but I don't have a size in this thing yeah because I'll only make a limited number of some of a certain design okay and then if you fall into if you happen to catch it while it's still out I'll make it for you in your own size love love Um, love so yeah what what is African red hair African red hair the the brand yeah I would say if you can imagine a garment with freckles so <laughs> no that's, that's wow. literally how I can explain it okay. so it's a, it's, it's 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 a denim okay. or it's a blazer but something stands out about it okay. something special whether it's lining or detail oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. you know so it's it's basically something about the garments gotta say hey let me look again yes oh, exactly you know when you spoke about denims earlier on and we spoke about healthy eating and the fit you know black holes always struggle with jeans, you know, <laughs> where do you guys get your jeans from? Because, because I, mean, I yeah, know that they no, just, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Yeah. you know, when you just turn so around, you actually <laughs> measure, you have to make them, because that is a it's cool point a problem, for me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so sure. true, and it's actually quite difficult to find really good denim material. Yes. Um, at this stage, I'm only making these kind of pants. Okay. Because ooh, I'm really you need to stand up so we can see. <laughs> This is the only pants range that is available at the moment. So, so I'm making these pants and I'm making blazers and I'm making bow ties. That's it. Ooh. Blazers, bow ties, and oh. these. My boyfriend calls them Shabarang's pants. Shabarang. Uh, <laughs> Shabarang. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so where can people um, find your stuff? Are you on Insta? You, I'm on Insta at okay. African Redhead. Okay. Um, but African if you're interested Redhead. in specific orders, so I work like I'm a really personal touch kind mm, of person. One one. So you can email me on fashion at africanradiate.com okay. and we have a, a style conversation. What do you like? What are you into? And we, we kind of kind of design stuff according to, to that kind of thing. Mm. So it's a very one-on-one. Awesome. On one. Um, let's, let's talk to you about your style. Please. And then I'll design a blazer that you and I have agreed on. Okay. So I think a long one that comes up to here that kind of has a shape mm-hmm. of head will work great for you. What do you think? Okay. Um, and if I'm making a bow tie, anything from something that looks like newspaper material to Ooh. something Something that's made with buttons. Yes, you know, yes. like a quick, there's a quick to everything that I make. Love it. All the three things. Oh, oh I'm coming for oh, wow. that bow tie. <laughs> 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 Mali, it has been such a pleasure yeah, having you here. Yes. Yes. Wow, you are incredible. I don't want to leave. So Wow, thank you so, so, so much You're for sharing welcome. your precious you. time with us. Yes. And ladies, as usual, it has been fun. Yes, yes. we have. It's a lot.